This is Carrie Grote. She died in September 2021, and after her death, she posted a letter to Facebook, and I'm going to share it with you. If you're reading this, this fucking brain cancer probably got me. But let me be crystal clear while I'm able. I did not lose the battle against cancer. This is a ridiculous, steamy pile of horse shit that society has dumped on cancer patients. Western medicine and Western culture especially is so uncomfortable talking about death that instead it created this battle analogy that basically shames people who die from cancer. Newsflash, none of us get out of this rodeo called life. There is no shame in dying from cancer or any serious illness, and it doesn't need to be a battle. It's a transition that each of us will go through. I was asked by a shaman who I spoke to after my second brain surgery, are you running toward life? Or are you running away from death? Whoa, that got my attention. There's a big difference. I got it wrong more often than not. Don't let fear fuel your choices. Live fearlessly. Run toward life. Don't worry about what people think. Trust me, it doesn't matter. Focus on you. Be true to yourself. Be your own best friend. People who tell you you're selfish are not your people. If the voice in your head says these unkind things, get a new voice. Honor your mental health and seek out a good therapist with the same vigor that you'd search for a romantic partner. Speaking of, be intentional about cultivating friendships that lift you up. As those friendships grow and change, don't overlook them while you search for that great love of your life. No, I'm not suggesting you sleep with your bestie, but do you. Another unhelpful message that we get from society is that we need a love of our life as a romantic partner. Single and childless when I was diagnosed with terminal brain cancer, I looked around my life and I came up sputtering and sobbing from the wave of grief that washed over me. I thought I'd be doing this alone. No husband, no kids, no great love. How wrong I was. At the first appointment with my neuro-oncologist, one of the nurses diligently hauled in chair after chair for the great loves of my life who came with me that horrible day and for the many days after that. I sat and I listened while the doctor explained the 12-month treatment plan focusing on my breathing. Then I looked around the room, filled with great loves of my life, incredible women friends whom I had met at various stages of my life. Surround yourself with people who contradict that unkind voice, people who see your light and remind you who you are, an amazing soul. Learn how to receive the reflections from your people because they are speaking the truth. Love yourself no matter how weird and silly it might feel. Every morning, give yourself a hug before your feet hit the floor. Look deeply into your eyes in a mirror and say to yourself out loud, I trust you. That voice in your head might say you're a dork, but ignore it. As I prepare to leave this body and embark on this mysterious journey of my soul, I hope these observations from my deathbed are somehow useful. What I know deep down in my bones is that learning to love myself has led me to be able to say this, I'm proud of how I lived. May you, dear reader, feel the same when you head out on your soul journey too. Until then, enjoy the ride and always eat the dessert first, especially if there's pie.